Tak. Okay. Boleh Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh and very good evening to our professor. Okay, today we are going to present our assignment which is theory of continental drift versus theory of fleet tectonics. Our group members have six members including me. Uh, so let's go to the introduction. The main difference between plate tectonics and continental drift is that plate tectonics describes the features and movement of Earth's surface in the present and in the past, whereas continental drift describes the drifting of Earth's continents on the ocean bed. Plate tectonics and continental drift are important theories in geology. The theory of plate tectonic is, in fact, developed based on the theory of continental drift. Therefore, these are two theories that describe closely related phenomena. What is the theory of continental drift? Continental drift describes one of the earliest ways geologists thought continents move over time. In the early 20th century, Wagner published a paper explaining his theory that the continental land masses were drifting across the earth, sometimes flowing through oceans and into each other. So, what is the main point of the continental drift theory? Continental drift was a theory that explained how continents shift position on a surface. Set forth in 1912 by Alfred Wagner, a geophysicist and meteorologist, continental drift also explained why look-alike animals and plant fossils and similar rock formations are found on different continents. So what is the law of theory of plate tectonics? The theory of plate tectonics states that the Earth's solid outer crust the lithosphere is separated into plates that move over the atmosphere, the molten upper portion of the mantle. Oceanic and continental plates come together, spread apart and interact at uh, boundaries all over the planet. So, I give to other presenters to present their part. Okay. Um, beside the way the continents fit together, Wagner and his supporters collected a great deal of evidence for the continental drift hypothesis. Here I found five evidence that support for continental drift. First one is identical rock of the same type and age are found on both sides of the Atlantic Ocean. Wagner said the rock had formed side by side and the land had since moved apart. The second one is mountain range with the same rock type structures and edges are now on opposite sides of the Atlantic Ocean. The Appalachians of the Eastern United States and Canada, for example, are just like mountain ranges in Eastern Greenland, Ireland, Great Britain and Norway as shown in the figure. We're going to conclude that they form as a single mountain range that was separated as the continents drift. Uh, the third one is uh, ancient fossil of the same species of extinct plant and animal are found in rocks of the same age but are on continents that are now widely separated as shown in the figure three. We're going to propose that the organism had lived side by side, but that the land had moved apart after they were dead and fossilized. He suggested that the organis organism would not have been able to travel across the oceans. Uh, next, for the fourth point, growth and rock deposit left by ancient glaciers are found today on different continents very close to the equator. This would indicate that the glaciers either form in the middle of the ocean and covered most of the earth. Today, glaciers only form on land and nearer the poles. Wegener thought that the glaciers were centered over southern land mass close to the south pole and the continents move to their present position later on. 
And the last one, the last evidence is coral reef and coal forming swamps are found in tropical and subtropical environment, but ancient coal seams and coral reef are found in location which is much too cold today. Wegener suggested that these creatures were alive in warm climates zone and that the fossil and coal later had drifted to new locations on the continent. Next, I pass to Muhammad Putra. Okay. Um, however, the hypothesis that uh, bring out by the Wegener is not uh, being accepted accepted at first by the uh, scientists. The main reason that uh, the Wegener hypothesis is not accepted was because uh, su suggested uh, mechanism. Uh, there's no mechanism for the moving continents. He thought that the force of the Earth, Earth spin was sufficient to cause continents to move, but uh, geologists knew that rocks are too strong for this to be true. Uh, it took then 50 uh, years for Wagner's theory to be accepted. One of the reasons was that it was difficult to work, to work, but uh, to work out. Uh, to work out how whole continents could move. It was not until the 1960s that enough evidence was discovered to support the theory fully. Why is it not accepted by the scientific community? There is a uh, lacking in the theory of the mechanism. No mechanism uh, show that uh, how solid continents could move around on the solid earth. Solid earth. Why did the continents drift and what patterns did they follow? Uh, asked by the scientists. Virginia su suggested that perhaps the rotation of Earth, of, of Earth caused the continents to shift towards the part of each other. Uh, scientists uh, argued that there was no way to explain how solid continents could flow through solid oceanic crust. Uh, then the Wagener's idea was nearly forgotten until the discovery of the apparent polar wonder renewed scientists' interest in the continental drift. Additionally, the technological advance presented uh, more evidence that the Wagener's idea is true. Next, I will pass to the Muhammad Fidaus. Okay, Assalamualaikum and very good evening. Okay, I will present about the uh, plate tectonic. Uh, next slide. Uh, next slide, Okay, uh, a tectonic plate, also called a uh, lithospheric plate, is a massive, irregularly shaped slab of uh, solid rock, generally composed of both continental and ocean lithosphere. Okay, the variation in plate thickness are nature's way of partly compensating for the imbalance in the weight and density of the two types of crust. Okay, there are several evidence that support the claim of the plate tectonics. Okay, the first one is the distribution of fossil on different continents. Okay, fossil on different continents 
are similar to fossil on continent that we are once connected. When the continent split, uh, different life form develop. Okay, the next evidence is uh, the occurrence of earthquake. Okay, most continental and ocean floor feeder are the result of geological activities and earthquakes along plate boundaries. So the exact pat pattern depends on whether the plates are converging, being pushed together to create mountains or deep ocean trenches. Uh, that diverging uh, being pulled apart to form new ocean floor at ridges or sliding past each other along surface faults. Okay, uh, the last evidence is uh, continental and ocean floor feeders, including mountains, volcanoes, faults, and trenches. Okay. Most, distri most distribution of rocks within a crust, including min mineral, fossil fuel, and energy resource, are a direct result of history of plate motion and collision and the uh, corresponding changes in configuration of the continents and ocean basin. Okay. Uh, which layer of the earth that is actually moving? Uh, the crust and the upper layer of mantle together make up a zone of rigid, bitter rock called a uh, lithosphere. Okay, the layer below the rigid lithosphere is a zone of shot light uh, consistency called the atmosphere. Uh, the atmosphere is uh, the part of the mantle that flow and move the pl plates of the earth. Okay, that's all for me. Then I pass to the next presenter. Okay, now I will present but what are the different types of the tectonic plate movement. Okay, um, basically we have three of the tectonic plate movement, which is one is convergent boundaries, where two plates are colliding. Second is divergent boundaries, where two plates are moving apart. And number three is transform boundaries, where plate slides past each other. Okay, first we go to the first is uh, the tectonic plate movement, which is convergent boundaries. Convergent boundaries are uh, where plate serving land mass collide, the crust crumple and buckle into mountain range. India and Asia crashed about 55 million years ago, slowly giving rise to the Himalaya, the highest mountain system on Earth. As the mashup continues, the mountains get higher. Mount Everest, the highest part of the Earth, may be a tiny bit taller tomorrow than it is today. Okay, uh, the, this convergent boundaries also occur when a plate of ocean dive in a process called subduction under a landmass. As the overlaying plates lift up, it also forms mountain range. In addition, the diving plates melt and is often spilled out in volcanic eruption, such as those that form some of the mountains in the Andes of South America. At ocean converges, one plate usually dives beneath the other, the other, forming deep trench, trenches like the Marina Trench in the North Pacific Ocean, the deepest point of the Earth. This type of collision can also lead to underwater volcanoes that eventually build up into island uh, like Japan. Okay, for the second. Uh, Plate movement is uh, divergent boundaries where two plates are moving apart. Divergent at divergent boundaries in the oceans, magma from deep in the Earth's mantle rise toward the surface and push apart two or more plates, like the picture here. Mountains and volcanoes rise along the seam. The process renew the ocean floor and widen the giant basins. A single mid-ocean range system connect the world oceans making the ridge the longest mountain range in the world. Uh, some of that, on land giant throws such as the Great 
Rift Valley in Africa from where plates are toggled apart. If the plates there continues to di diverse, millions of years from now, Eastern Africa will split from the continent to form a new landmass. A mid-ocean ridge will then mark the boundary between the plates. And for the last uh, plate movement, is is transform boundaries where two plates slide each past each other. Okay, the San Andreas Fault in California is an example of a transform boundary where two plates green grind past each other along what are called straight slip fault. These boundaries don't produce spectacular feature like mountain or ocean, but the halting motion often triggers large earthquakes, such as 1960, 96, 1996 one that devastated San Francisco. And here, what happened to the fun San Francisco and San Andres? Okay, that's all from me. Now I will pass to the next presenter. Thank you. Okay, for question number four. Uh, what are the real world example of tectonic plates movements? Okay, this is the plate boundaries, which is transform plate, divergent plate boundary, and convergent plate boundary. Next slide. Okay, first, transform boundaries. Transform fault boundaries can be distinguished from the typical stride slip faults because the sense of movement is in the opposite direction. A stride slip fault is a simple offset. However, a transform fault is formed because two different plates each moving away from the spreading center of a divergent plate boundary. A smaller number of transform faults cut continental lithosphere. And the, uh, for example, the most famous example uh, of this is the San Andreas fault zone of Western North America. The San Andreas connect the divergent boundary in the Gulf of California with the Cascadia subduction zone. Another example of transform boundary on land is the Alpine Fault of New Zealand. Uh, next slide. Okay, next is divergent boundaries. Divergent boundary or divergent plate boundary is a linear feature that exists between two lectonic plates tectonic plates that are moving away from each other. Divergent boundary within continent continents initially produce reef, which eventually become reef valleys. Most active divergent plate boundaries occur oceanic plates and exist as main oceanic ridges. Divergent boundaries also form volcanic islands, which occur when the plates move apart for, uh, to produce gaps that magma rises to fill. The main Atlantic ridge that is slow, slowly pushing North America away from Europe. Uh, and the main Atlantic ridge lies mostly in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean and is the classic example of uh, the divergent plate boundary. This tells us that a couple of large mental plums are at work below the Earth's surface and these are gradually pulling the crust apart. That's what that. Okay, next is convergent boundaries. Example of continent convergent boundaries are the collision of the India plate with the Eurasian plate creating creating the Himalaya mountains and the collision of the Africa plate with the uh, Eurasian plate creating the series of range extending from the Alps in Europe to the Zagros mountain to, uh, in Iran. Another example is the Pacific Ring of Fire. At convergent plate boundaries, oceanic crust is often forced down into the mantle 
where it begin to melt. Magma rises into and through the other plate, solidifying into granite and the rock that makes up the continents. Okay, for the conclusion, uh, next slide. Uh, okay, for the conclusion, uh, first, the tectonics and the continental drift are important theories in geology. These are, in fact, two theories that describe closely related phenomena. Next plate, uh, tectonics describe the feature and movement of Earth's surface in present and in the past, whereas uh, continental drift describe the drifting of Earth's continents on the ocean bed. And lastly, this is the main difference between plate tectonics and continental drift. Okay, that's all from us. Thank you. Em.